All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and set up our Django project on VS Code or Visual Studio Code. So go to code.visualstudio.com and just download the version for your machine. It is free and cross-platform. Those are the keys, free and cross-platform. It also has a huge community of people or developers that build all sorts of great things for it. Now, this is not Visual Studio. Visual Studio is a different kind of text editor. We're not gonna worry about that. It's also not free. Sublime Text is a text editor I've used in the past. Also not free, but it does have a free version. I actually really still like Sublime Text, but Visual Studio Code just has a lot of features, a lot of extensions really that make it the best for me. Atom's another option, PyCharm's another option. Um, I don't use those myself, I have tried them out, but Visual Studio Code or VS Code is by far my favorite. So go ahead and download it, install it, and then once you do that, come on back and take a look at this, right? So you're gonna wanna open up VS Code and notice that it is called Code. And this is where we now need to actually start our new project. So you're gonna see a welcome screen much like this. Now, for me, I actually do not like seeing the welcome page on startup. So go ahead and get rid of that. And so what we wanna do now is we're actually gonna create a brand new project from scratch. So the entire folder, a virtual environment, installing Django, adding a requirements file, all of that, everything we just did. You know, the reason to do this is to get good at it. That's it. And to really emphasize the commands that we really need to know now and the things we really need to know now versus everything that we could possibly learn. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a new folder. So inside a file, you're gonna wanna actually add a folder to this workspace, okay? So go ahead and add folder to workspace. Now, another way to do this is by clicking on the Explorer here. This will actually toggle this side window here and you can open up a folder there. Uh, but I'm actually gonna go ahead and add a folder to workspace. This is typically what I like to do because if you already have a folder in here, in my case, I have the TriJango folder already created, but there's nothing in it, um, you could absolutely go ahead and use that. But again, let's go ahead and do it as if nothing even exists. So I'm gonna delete that TriJango folder and we'll go ahead and create a brand new one, Tri-Django. And, you know, obviously go ahead and hit create and then go ahead and hit add. So this is now in our workspace here, okay? So this is not necessarily a folder that VS Code recognizes as a workspace. So I can also then go into file and I wanna save this workspace. So eventually I'm gonna go ahead and save the workspace inside of here, inside of TriJango. But before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and add a requirements.txt file in here. And if you remember, we had something for Django that was greater than or equals to, and that was 3.2, and then comma less than 3.3. We actually created that requirements file before, right? No big deal, it now has a way to create it. So we're actually gonna use this requirements file um, to install Django instead of the way we did it before. Okay, so inside of try Django, now I'm gonna go ahead and try and save this workspace as. So for whatever reason, mine's not showing up correctly. So what I wanna do then is I'm just gonna go ahead and maybe open a new window. Yeah, so now it's actually showing up, maybe a little bug on the video I have. Um, or the VS Code version I have. Of course, they up, update new versions all the time. Worst case scenario, I open up a new window and just navigate to that folder again. But now I'm gonna go ahead and save this workspace in here as just simply try-django, okay? So this workspace is something I'll be able to open again. So if I actually close out that window, navigate to my dev folder, open up that workspace, um, it should give me basically the exact same stuff. Right, kind of even potentially even the state that I left it in where these two files were open. Okay, cool. So that's some minor VS Code basics. Uh, but now what I wanna do is I want to install a couple things. First off, clicking on the extensions, I wanna go ahead and do a search for Python. Now, in some sense, I think the extension for Python is a cheat, right? So you're like sort of cheating yourself using an extension when you're learning more about Python. However, it will also make sure that the bugs and the things that you face um, aren't too challenging, right? So I don't want little tiny little errors to get in the way of your progress. Those tiny errors, you can always get into more depth later. So download and install this. You'll probably see an install button. Go ahead and install that. Restart VS Code if you have to. 
but of course there are other ones. I typically use the one from Microsoft that has a lot of downloads, right? So nearly 40 million downloads for that one. But of course there's another one from Thomas Hakan Townsend, sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, 3 million downloads, right? So there are other ones out there. They are third-party extensions. So definitely be careful on the third-party extensions because sometimes they might have malicious code. I don't think the ones that have millions of downloads do, uh, but certainly we wanna use IntelliSense on Python um, from Microsoft itself. Okay, that's the only extension we'll talk about now. So we've got our extension installed. We have our folder ready. We have a requirements file. Now it's time to actually create our virtual environment. Now the question is, how do we create that? Now, do we actually open up terminal, open up a new terminal window or PowerShell and CD into that folder, right? So of course, all of these things exist as we see right here. And you totally could create it in here. You could totally use terminal to create it, but I wanna do everything inside of VS Code. The cool thing about VS Code that not every text editor or code editor has is a built-in terminal that's easy to use. So inside of here, we can go in and click on new terminal, or you can use control and tilde. So tilde will open up a new terminal window for you. It will also close it, so it just toggles it. And if you're not familiar with what tilde looks like, it's that right there. And of course, it might be different on different parts of the world. So by all means, look at the shortcut that's listed here, right? So in my case, it's control and uh, you know, back tick actually, um, but we can think of it as tilde or back tick, either one, because in my case, the keyboard has both of them there. So back tick and tilde. Okay. Um, anyway, so now I actually have this terminal window, but the coolest thing, one of the coolest things about it is if I PWD or DIR if you're on Windows. So if you do PWD, you see that you're in the same folder already. So you don't have to navigate to the folder that your workspace is in. This is like such a cool thing to just shortcut about, you know, with your actual project. So now what I'm gonna do is use Python 3.6. And then again, we'll check the version. And if you're on Windows, you're probably gonna have to do C colon Python 36. Let's type it out correctly. And python.exe. And you'll do dash V or dash M, V, E, and V, and period. Much like what we're gonna do in just a second. So we'll go ahead and create that virtual environment. And hit enter. Okay, cool. So one of the things you'll notice is this down here. It says Python 3.8.2, especially if you have the Python extension installed from VS Code. That is something that's important. We actually want to change that. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna select that button and it's gonna open this up. And we wanna actually try to select the interpreter that we want. So we're gonna click on that and then we're gonna click on enter interpreter path and we'll go ahead and do find. And what we wanna do here is we wanna find the version of Python that our virtual environment's using. So typically it's gonna be in the bin. And if you're on a Windows, I believe it's also in bin, it might be in scripts, but the idea is you wanna find the Python shortcut. Whatever that Python is, we're gonna go ahead and grab that and select that interpreter. Notice that in my case, it actually changes to 3.6.8. You don't have to do this. It's just a good idea in my opinion. So next thing, once we actually have our terminal open and we have our virtual environment here, I'm gonna go ahead and do source bin slash activate or dot slash script slash activate. If you're, again, if you're on Windows, cool. So the other nice thing about this is I can actually create a, another terminal window and open that up. So if I hit the plus here, it's changed over time on how this actually works, but I can actually toggle between different terminal windows and I can source bin slash activate in either one. Pretty cool. So with that, I can also delete out that terminal window as you see there. And now I just have one. Okay, so now what I wanna do is install Django with pip install Django or pip install dash R as in use a requirements file from requirements.txt. And notice that it's installing between those two versions. So this is definitely something that I'm gonna to wanna to keep for the long run, uh, but here's, that's the general idea is I need to install it here. We've already seen this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and run python-m and we'll go ahead and use Django. And we're gonna run start project try Django and make sure we put a period at the end so that the 
root of the virtual environment folder is where the root of the Django project is, also known as where manage.py is next to all of these other things. Cool, so we now have our Django project set up inside of VS Code. So if you've never done this before and it was too fast, I totally get you. If you have done this before and it was too slow, I get you too. The thing is, we all need to be on the same page to move forward because once we're on the same page as far as our setup process is concerned, we can do a lot more going forward. So let's go ahead and 